Local charities to receive funding cuts. Government spending cuts live reaction. And in sport, Winchester City and yet more cup drama. Good afternoon. Welcome to Winchester News Online. I'm Claire Ice Brandy. Winchester Night Shelter is to receive substantial funding cuts along with over 30 other charitable organisations in the local area. With only one full-time member of staff, these cuts could force the shelter to close. Jack Cortez investigates. The homeless in Winchester are amongst the victims of funding cuts to charities and local organisations this week. Winchester Night Shelter already had its funding cut from 10,000 to 4,000 in 2008, but once again it will face a funding cut this year. In comparison, the redevelopment of Winchester High Street this year cost £2 million. One of the councillors in charge of deciding where the council money is spent spoke briefly on the effects of charities and why the cuts are needed. Uh, I don't think it, it should make that much difference um, because uh, the organisations already exist, a lot of them don't have a big budget anyway, uh, and a lot of them will be done by volunteers who don't get The Winchester paid. Night Shelter's manager commented on Councillor Harry Verney's statement. Would it affect us? Of course it would. We can't cut our staff anymore, and we run on a complete shoestring skeleton staff. The Night Shelter and the other 36 organisations to face cuts shows the effects of the financial crisis are long-standing and painful for those in Winchester. But at least the streets are clean. Jack Cortez-Brown for Winnell News. Today sees the release of the government's spending review and I have with me now in the studio Julie Cordia, our financial correspondent, who's been watching the news as it unfolds. Julie, um, how is this going to affect Winchester specifically? Well, the really shocking news that nobody was expecting is a 41% cut in arts administration and a lot of our students here at the University of Winchester are looking to go into that field. So they won't be able to find a job after graduating. So it's really bad news for Winchester students. Yeah. Anything else that's uh, particularly going to affect Winchester University? Well, the other big headline is that the BBC is going to lose three hundred and forty million pounds. So that means that students who want who want to go into media or journalism won't be able to find a job at the BBC. That's certainly bad news for students like us, Julie. And uh, how about universities as a whole? How are they going to fare? Well, the overall cut is about 7%. So that's a lot of pain. This is really bad for us. Uh, it's going to affect a lot of universities, but Winchester is in a better position than other universities. It's still damaging. OK, thanks very much indeed, Julie. Now, our crime correspondent Andrew Giddings attended Winchester Crown Court on Monday where Tracy Dorber, a female member of a notorious paedophile ring, was found guilty of sexual assault. 44-year-old Tracy Dorber was found here at the court to have sexually assaulted a five-month-old girl while her boyfriend photographed the abuse. Dorber, formerly of Southport in Merseyside, had entered a not guilty plea, claiming that she did not know that photographs were being taken while she held the baby. However, her then-boyfriend, 40-year-old Colin Blanchard, who had already admitted taking the pictures, said that Dorber was fully aware of what was happening and that he was simply following her instructions. Now Blanchard has already been convicted for child pornography offences and was a key figure in the infamous case involving Bristol nursery worker Vanessa George. Mr Justice Royce denied a request for bail, saying that a custodial sentence of some length is inevitable. This is Andrew Giddings for Winchester News Online, Winchester Crown Court. Commuters will have to share the pain. That's according to Transport Secretary Philip Hammond. The government plans to increase train fares in order to meet the new requirements of the recent spending review. Here's Julie Cordia with more. Commuters will soon pay more money for their train tickets. According to Transport Secretary Philip Hammond, billions of pounds must be saved from the transport budget. Winchester City Council fear that rise will affect the city. If people start to make the calculation and choose to use car instead of rail, then you have extra parking problems, you have extra uh, circulation of travel, because as you know, Winchester's got a one-way system in the middle. And for rail prices to go up, that is going to be a huge um, problem for people and, and a, a barrier, a barrier to, to work, to... Um, um, even to uh, to business. Um, well, we'll probably have to start driving, won't we? Yeah. Um, and, and socially. It'll affect us socially, because we've got to go see mates and things, and we can't if it's going to be so expensive. 
The Association of Train Operating Company has recently announced that raising fares is the government's decision. The head of Transport Select Committee has also warned the public about unlimited increases in fares. There is also a risk of overcrowding as 2,000 new carriages are on hold across the UK. Chancellor George Osborne will reveal his spending review this morning. Julie Cordier, Winchester News Online. Unison are demonstrating outside the Royal Hampshire County Hospital in reaction to public spending cuts affecting the Winchester and Eastleigh Healthcare NHS Trust. Stuart Appleby was there earlier today. I'm joined by Steve Brazier, Head of Health for Unison South East. Uh, so Steve, uh, tell me a bit about today, tell me a bit about the campaign here. Today is about medical secretaries and the concern about their work being sent to India and to try and draw attention that the NHS isn't safe under the coalition government. The reason why you should be getting rid of staff. A statement from the Winchester and Eastleigh Healthcare NHS Trust said although they experienced a tough period financially as well as other public authorities, they aim to achieve £11 million saving target this year. They also undertaken a review of efficiency savings where a number of posts which are not needed will be lost, but the staff who have lost their jobs will have the opportunity to reapply at the next available opportunity. There's also an external resources review where there will be liaison between consultants and patients. Stuart Appleby, Winchester News Online. And now it's time for your sport with Tom Obtresky. Tom. Thanks, Claire. Well, Winchester City had to cross the Solent over to the Isle of Wight for their latest fixture, taking on East Cows Victoria in the Sydenham's League Cup. Karen Pennell was there. City gained the upper hand over East Cows Victoria last night with a goal from Zach Glassball after only five minutes. After a tackle in the box, the Vicks were awarded a penalty, which was saved by City goalkeeper Scott O'Rourke. Controversially, the referee ordered a retake, which Kieran Sainsbury tucked into the right-hand corner to equalise. Glasspool gave City the advantage once again with another goal just before half-time. Winchester's victory was secured when super sub Yevon Speaker scored with his first touch after coming on. Manager Guy Butters was pleased with his team's performance. All over the pitch, I thought, you know, we've done really well. It's hard to come to some sometimes when you come in the cup against, you know, teams that are lower division than you. They always put up a fight, but, you know, you've got to match them for the work rate, and we've done that today. Sometimes it's a bit of a slippery one, but, you know, like I say, we, we more than matched them. For your performance and for your goals tonight, we've chosen you, Zach Glasspool, as our win on man of the match. Thank you very much. Cheers. It was a great set of results for our local teams in the Conference South this week. Basingstoke brushed aside Bromley 4-1. Wes Fogden scored three in Havens and Waterlooville's 5-1 demolition of Bishop Stortford. Elsewhere, Eastleigh recorded a 3-0 win over Dartford. Now, the Winchester Knights basketball team have a new coach this year, hoping to improve on last year's form. James Fraser caught up with him to see what his aspirations are for the new season. Um, well, what I hope to achieve this year is obviously to take the players we've got, find out where their strengths are, where their weaknesses are. And I've met the guys, they're, they're a great bunch of guys, uh, get on really well with all of them. Uh, they all seem like they want to learn, they want to develop, which is all I can ask for. And as long as everyone puts in 110%, I think we'll have a cracking season. I mean, I know your coach from last year, and I know that he did a very good job. I can see how some of the players here have developed, knowing the players. Um, however, I feel there's a lot of work to be done. I've played and coached at, in the university leagues which is my strength over what your previous coach was, just because obviously I know that it is a social thing as much as it is to be taken seriously, and I think I can get more out of the team because of that. In women's football, Izzy Forty rescued a point for Winchester as they drew 3-3 with table-topping Eastleigh. They're ahead inside 10 minutes and could have increased their lead, but Forty scuffed her penalty wide. But just before the break, she atoned for that error to make it 2-0. After half-time, Eastley scored three goals to go in front before Forty spared her team's blushes with a late equaliser. Now, that's all your sport for today. Let's head back to Claire. Thanks very much, Tom. Now, with a little celebrity news, the Bishop of Winchester has been awarded an honorary degree following his long-term involvement with the university. Michael Connolly reports. The Bishop of Winchester is one of the most important in the country, covering the majority of the Hampshire, East Dorset and Channel Islands area. The Right Reverend Michael Scott Joint is receiving a degree after 15 years at the post. That's, that's a really great honour. Um, I think it'll be quite strange on, on Thursday to be kind of on the receiving end of this process. 
and, uh, and receiving a degree. But basically, it's a real honour that the university chooses to chooses to honour me, I suppose, after what, nearly 15 years uh, as a governor, because I'm a governor. And, and I've been privileged to see the university through uh, an astonishing period of change in a short time and, and huge achievement. The bishop will receive the honorary degree on Thursday the 21st of October at Winchester Cathedral. Michael Connolly, Winchester News Online. Now, have you noticed, Tom, it's getting a little bit nippier lately? I have indeed, actually. I've started to feel the effects of my annual winter cold, oh, unfortunately. Lovely. That's great. Hope I don't catch it. Um, you know how to uh, cure a winter cold, though, don't you? And that's to wrap up warm. So we're going to leave you with a little snippet of Claire Lomas and Katie Rowell's perfect guide to adapting your wardrobes for those autumnal winds. To see the whole feature and for more award-winning news and sport, don't forget to visit www.winall.co.uk. Until next week, bye-bye. Goodbye.